So we're going to continue to approximate area between a curve and the x-axis. We're going to switch gears. Instead of using rectangles to help us approximate, we're going to use trapezoids. So it would be helpful for us to have the area formula for a trapezoid. So let's just document it, record it, maybe somewhere right here. It's the height of the trapezoid times the sum of the bases divided by 2. So for our first example, we're going to approximate the region from this curve to the x-axis beginning from x equals negative 3 to x equals 1, and we're told to use four trapezoids. So we have a little bit of work to do here to kind of understand you know, how to do the setup for this problem. Um, let's first of all figure out how wide each of these trapezoids are going to be. The height, if you will. Delta x equals b minus a over n, that handy formula. In this case, it's 1 minus negative 3 over 4, and that's going to calculate to 1. So our trapezoids are equally spaced. They all have a width of 1. We're going to see here in a minute through a visual that it's actually the height. I might suggest coming over here and taking this function. If, if you didn't have a graphing calculator, I'm, I'm certain that they would provide the graph for you. Um, but for us right now, we have a graphing calculator, the use of it. So if you type it into the calculator, the integram, and you pay attention to what's happening from negative 3 to 1, you're going to see the graph come down like this somewhat. And actually, it does hit the x-axis at 1. Okay. So for a visual for what we're finding, we're actually finding the area in the region starting with negative 3 all the way over to 1. We want to find what is an approximation for that area right there. All right, we're going to use four trapezoids. And they are going to be equally spaced. If it doesn't say that they're equally spaced, you can assume, you can assume that when they give you an equation that they are. All right, so we're going to start at negative 3. And we're going to travel over to negative 2. Let's go ahead and get a picture. Let's inscribe some trapezoids. Okay, that's going to be our first subdivision. On the left-hand side of each subdivision partition and the right-hand side, you're going to go up and meet the curve. And you're going to have these two functional values. All right, you're going to connect those two points and look what you've just drawn. <laughs> a trapezoid. All right, the next partition begins at negative 2. It's going to end at negative 1. On the left-hand side, go up and meet the curve. On the right-hand side of that partition, meet the curve at that functional value, connect them. You can see how these are already a better fit than the rectangles we've been using. Next partition begins at negative 1. It concludes at 0. Find the curve. Connect the points. Three trapezoids. Start at 0. Conclude at 1. Left-hand side is already there. Right-hand side is actually an x-intercept. When you connect these, it's not a trapezoid. It's a triangle. But the trapezoid formula still work for us. So let's find the area in each of these four trapezoids and add them together. All right, well, to do that, um, what would be helpful would be a t-chart okay, of these functional values at each of these inputs right here. taking turns evaluating the function at each of these numbers. Uh, it looks like I'm going to get square root of 28. Plugging negative 2 in, cubing it, subtracting it from 1, square root of 9 is 3. Negative 1 cubed, 1 minus, negative 1 is going to be 2, so it's square root of 2. 0 is easy, plug in 1, that's easy too. All right, so these are the functional values that we want to work with. These are going to be the heights of the trapezoids, the bases, if you will, of the trapezoids. So let's come over here and just begin the setup. It's a 
approximately, I'm going to approximate it using four trapezoids. So I'm going to go ahead and get the setup for those formulas for those four trapezoids. So I know in the area formula, the height, and let's see, the height is going to be the distance between the parallel bases. So the height of all these are going to be the one. I'm going to add the bases together. I'm just going to go ahead and get the setup. This is plus one times the sum of the bases divided by two and two more of these. It's going to be kind of crowded, but I wanted to fit it all on this line here. All right, looking at the first trapezoid, okay, uh, the two bases correspond to these two functional values right here at negative 3 and negative 2, so I'm going to add these two values. So square root of 28 plus 3. Corresponding to the second trapezoid, the two functional values I'm working with would be at x equals negative 2 and negative 1. So I'm going to take the 3 and add it to square root of 2. Notice the 3 is occurring twice, once in this trapezoid and once in this trapezoid, because the 3 is actually the base of the two trapezoids that are connected. All right, uh, for the third one, we're using the functional values at negative 1 and 0, so we're going to add square root of 2 plus 1. And in the final trapezoid, we'll add 1 and 0. And if you think about it right here, if base 2 is 0, this formula just collapses to the area formula for, for a triangle. Okay, at this point, I don't have an answer, but I would go right to my calculator, and I would do the computations, and I would come up with a numeric answer using a decimal. That's fine. Okay. Alrighty. Um, one thing I do want to point out, though, before we move to the next example, is just some observations. Notice that we were asked to use four trapezoids to approximate this region. We were asked to use four trapezoids. Well, what happened down here in our T-chart is that we generated five functional values. We're going to generate one more functional value than the number of trapezoids that we're using to approximate a region. If you think about it, you've got a beginning x and an ending x, so that's two functional values we need. And if we have four trapezoids, if you think about it real quick, you've got um, these partitions that fall in here that create the four trapezoids. So I actually have five points that are determining um, the bases of my four trapezoids. So kind of a built-in check process there. If you're doing eight trapezoids, then you should have nine functional values here. There's something to kind of think about and connect to. All right, so maybe if you have a calculator, you can find that answer, and I'll touch base with you guys um, next time we meet, and we'll see what you got. All right, in our next example, we're approximating the region uh, from f of x to the x-axis from 1 to 2 using four trapezoids and the given data. All right, so I'm going to just kind of study my x row here. I'm going to use four trapezoids from 1 to 2. And I'm going to assume that if I'm using the data that these trapezoids are equally spaced. They didn't have to be, but the data determines that they're equally spaced. All right, so I guess if I needed to know what the height of each trapezoid was, I could let the data, the difference between the consecutive x values suggest to me that the height of each trapezoid is going to be 1 fourth, 0.25. Again, I think the best thing for us is to go ahead and sketch a real quick graph using this manageable set of data points. All right, working with these plotted points here, again, I'm not really sure if the graph's concave up or concave down unless I'm given more information. <clears throat> At this point, I'm just going to connect these points. I can draw the concavity however I feel. Based on the given data, these are the points right here that I've plotted. I'm going to calculate the area, approximate the area in the region from 1 to 2. Oh, goodness. Hoping you get the idea. I need a straight edge. All right, let's go ahead and come over here and do our little work first of all. Let's figure out what is the width, B minus A, over the number of trapezoids. So that confirms that the width is 0.25 or 1 quarter. All right, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to inscribe my trapezoids. So from 1 to 1 and a quarter, it's the base, maybe. Okay, and on the left side, I'm going up to the curve and meeting that data point. Remember, we can't make up points if they're not there. And on the right-hand side, connecting those. 
So let me go ahead and try and see if I can inscribe these trapezoids here. I need to figure out how to use a straight edge on this. And on the right hand side, go up and then connect here. So here we have four trapezoids. And we're going to calculate the area in all four and then we're going to sum them. I don't really need a T-chart right here because I've got my data table already. I mean, that is my T-chart. So all that we have to do is show the computations that lead to our, our answer. All right, well, the height of every trapezoid is a fourth. Sum of the two bases divided by two. Just using the area formula for a trapezoid. Okay, coming to the first trapezoid, I'm going to use these first two values. I think you see where this is going. 6.14 plus 7.25. Uh, for the second trapezoid, I'm going to use the functional values at 1.25 and 1.5. So you see where we're at. For the next parenthesis, 7.64 plus 8.08. .08. I know you have more room on your paper, so you don't have to write it so crowded. So make sure when you're putting your framework up, your parentheses, that you kind of leave enough room for all these values here. 8.08 .08 plus 8.14. And then I'm just going to leave this for you to calculate right here. All right. That's it. That's an approximation approximation using trapezoids. Um, let me just kind of point out to you what I said earlier. Notice how many uh, points I have, data points. I have one, two, three, four, five, but I'm inscribing four rectangles, so I'll always have one more data point than the number of trapezoids. All right, so we worked with an equation. We worked with data, but in both of these examples so far, we worked with equally spaced trapezoids. And in these last two examples, I want to extend from there. I don't want to do equally spaced trapezoids, so let's kind of see how that works out. 